And you know, if you keep your paint nice and thin, not not that's thin for me, but um, not not too thick. I think it's a good idea just to paint it right below the next one. So you see, in, it, instead of keeping it thick like this, I thinned it out down here. Now when I pull the next layer, like some of this greenery down below, over this, um, it'll cover much easier and it won't mix with it too much. And you get, you'll get lots of nice overlapping. How dark is that? And I'm just going to bring it up into there. Yeah. Whew. Just trying to get a few little reds and things going on in there as well. There we go. So that's just the foundation. Stuff this sort of under stuff. There we go. And I like to keep these edges when I'm doing this really nondescript. <clears throat> Definitely could go a little bit thicker though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there sure is. Is there? Okay. Yeah. But I can move it more that way, but then you're standing no, out in the good. rain. If you're not out in the rain... No, over there it's, a gl okay. it's, it's just, just glary. Oh. This is good angle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I must have pain inside my gloves because my fingers are all orange. <laughs> I don't know how they got orange. I mean, they... <laughs> okay, maybe maybe a little thinner brush here because I'll do some um, some bones. <laughs> Contours, you know. Right. Oh, it's just lines. Branches. Uh, kind of red, yellow, and blue. I could, certainly could do them really dark like the other one. Right? Here's one little trick to uh, see if you do your branches a little darker over something light, then as they come over something dark, sometimes you'll see they, they will lighten up a little bit. So to come back over this part with something a little bit lighter, So you have light on dark and dark on light, just mm. to make it appear. Because sometimes the the value mm. of the branch is the same, and it just gets lost in mm. it all. Mm. So you need to emphasize. So I'll put a few of these in there because I, what I really like is the um, fall colors. Just a few branches to get me going. There's some dark ones at the bottom, wow. I guess, I guess it's telling me it needs some bones. I don't know. And, <clears throat> I have yellow, just a very little magenta, <clears throat> and a little Prussian, Prussian green in there. I'm just gonna take that right off. <clears throat> so that mixed in with my my background. So the more you push in, it'll mix. But mm -hmm. watch if I set it. <clears throat> see if I just set it on there like that see mm -hmm. just set it on there then it won't mix mm -hmm. like a palette knife mm -hmm. so that's that's a trick that's kind of a trick mm -hmm. so just remember right watch if I mix it in see it gets all it mixes in with the background color but mm -hmm. let's say you have a thick background color like that 
and you want to put a nice fresh color on top, if you just use a light touch and, and set it on there, see, mm -hmm. you'll get a nice stroke too. Mm -hmm. I can just bring these together. And, and all I'm thinking about is my positive and negative shape. So I don't want to cover up too much of my background. I don't exactly know. Ooh, that got, there's a lot of green down there. I didn't see that. Okay, I have a green. <laughs> I have some green over there. It's either that or clean my brush. <laughs> So I'm just bringing these things together. Need some more orange. Just trying to create some nice positive and negative shapes. And then it, if you happen to see an individual leaf once in a while, which you really don't, you, you might get a little bit of this on the edges, though. Let's see. This kind of thing on the edges. Be very much leaf leafology. Foliage. <laughs> Le Leafaliciousness. <laughs> you see, the detail is far more on the edge. That's where you want to go for the detail. You get these really beautiful little negative spaces. So, set up your mass and then, and then edge it out a little bit. Less is more when you're putting on the edges. Because mm -hmm. you can get really carried away with those edges. Mm -hmm. You can be there all day. Now I'll look at some really good landscape painters and you see how they use very little on their edge. Mm -hmm. They're very rhythmic. Are you going to paint <coughs> uh, over to the edge because some gallery over the require edge? that, right? And sometimes I do that when I when I when I float the painting uh -huh, uh -huh. in a floating frame, yeah. where you can see the edges. Yeah. Or do, do you that. you can hang it without a frame. Yeah, you so. no, you can hang it. Some people do that. They they just put it on their bookshelf nowadays. Yeah. So. So but so, so that, that way you have to paint. Sure. Yeah. So if you carry it to the edge, how do you do it? Oh, okay. Like that. Okay, just like that. I so just you take have to color right it. around. Uh -huh. If I if I were doing that, I would have taken all these colors, like the background right, colors, right. around. So, you do that later. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that later. For me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> we just did an exchange with this trough, the seal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You know the Chinese name seal I just carved for Professor. I wonder, do you think that would work on here? You'd have to wait for it to dry. Huh? Um. That's a good question. Ooh, because the it, it might go on there. You can use the paint, and we we have to clean it with soap. Because the stone, yeah, uh, you can clean it with soap. That would be nice. Mm. Yeah, let's do that. When you when you back with your drink, we try that. You know, you got some orange paints. We can do that. That would be nice. So you can clean the soap. So the stone with what? With soap, oh, okay. with a hand soap, or with any gentle uh, detergent, okay. anything. It's a, it's a stone. Yeah. You Wait, can you use that. The ink off? Is that what you're the, the the oil paint. Oil paint. Yeah. We were oh. going to stamp it in oil paint. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But uh, you have to find the. Really you don't find many people doing that, I bet you. No, not never. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do all kinds of things in here. Yeah. I like some of this uh, sage. Uh, yeah, down yeah there. I like the opaque uh, pastel look. Yeah. 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 So then, for some of the darker areas, well, uh -huh. I, I didn't really do my foliage yet. Uh -huh. um, yeah. 
I just want some, yeah, some of this over there. So just sort of meandering branches and. Mm -hmm. What blue is that? Uh, Prussian. Prussian blue. <clears throat> yeah. Should the dark come first always, or you can add it later? You know, I don't really. I, I used to think that. Well, mo most the traditional way to do things is establish the local color first. That's the main color. And that's what you're seeing mostly out there today. Mm -hmm. It's mostly local color because we don't have a lot of serious light. And then, and then go for your shadows and then go for your lights. And then maybe highlights and reflected lights and things like that. But they, they establish the local color first. Mm. I don't always do that. Mm -hmm. well, I really it's good to know the rule yeah. and then break it. Yeah. So establish the main color, let's say, of the oaks. Not the highlight, not, not the lighter part or, or the deep shadows, the main green of the oaks first. Hit that first, then come back in with your shadows, then back over that with the lights. Mm. Maybe some edges, some highlights, and any sort of edges and edges and edges and edges, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. Because you never stop doing edges. They'll drive you down here, I might hit something darker. Do you paint thicker when it's lighter? Do you think? Uh, I, I usually paint thick all the time, but what do you what do you mean when it's lighter? I think the front maybe for the light color thicker. The light. Oh, I see. Yeah, for the for the lighter colors, um, it's a good idea to get thicker, and it's a pretty traditional thing too. I think I have a theory. Maybe it's wrong. Uh, the background the thinnest, the foreground the thickest. So yeah. it's like a oh. that's two, generally two D and a half. That's what I call it. Right. Two D that does create three D. You yeah. create a relief, yeah. relief. Yeah. It's a like relief sculpture. Uh -huh. The so tree pops up. Yeah, the closer it is. To yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. It, the yeah. mountain recedes. It's thing or skies. You, yeah. you don't. So it's not light in the dark. It's front and the back for me. No. It's flatter in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So yeah, I, I, that's so this is a flat. So what's pop up is in the front of the yeah. tree. And I do it for practical reasons too, just because the thicker stuff, um, the thinner stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to do it that way all the time, though. I mean, I definitely break all the rules, but it, it's good to know those. Thick, thick on top of thin works better. <laughs> well, you can do thin on top of thick though, if you really want to real, uh, really. Get get some solvent. Get a whole bunch of this. Like, if you if you thin this down, really really thin it down and get some on there. Oh, you mean like a glazing? Well, let, let's say if you did want to do some branches or something, it might be a good way to do a branch. I don't have the color dark enough, but oh, that also works. Yeah. So, so where is thin dark over light? Let me make this really dark. So that's two. Let's see. Really thin it down. You gotta get some yeah, you have to use turbines, turbines, not yeah. to water, right? Because I have a rule: if you use the water mixable oil, you cannot use water on top of a, the thicker one. Oh, okay. no, the water it doesn't work. See how that works? The water goes down. The oil on top of water, not the other way around. But, but you see how that yeah. that goes right on top of the. But thing? with turpentine, may be fine. Yeah. yeah. So the oil above water is the rule, I think. Because our, our water sinks to the, oh. yeah. So I could do that. I like that. That was thin yeah. on top of thick. Yeah. And then easily come back over it. Mm -hmm. With thick. Yeah. With, with a few of these thicker things just to kind of lose some of the mm -hmm. branches here and there. I'll just keep that. Because <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Don't touch this. Is, uh, well, one thing is people are seeing the painting without a can, without a frame on it, and it looks nicer. Well, you know what? It's kind of cool. It, uh -huh. it, it has right. a very cool look to it. Yeah. Quiet and that little bit. Uh, oh yeah, if you don't complete it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think you don't have to complete uh, yeah. like a perfect, right. but it has some like a random, uh, what it called as, uh, just like a John Mary does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. John Mary. Yeah. 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 With a watercolor, you leave the edge.
Yeah. And then you float it uh, in a frame. Yeah. Yeah.